Hey guys, today I will help you make sense out of all of this. Let's get started. When seeing a choral score for the first time, it can look something like this, or like this, or like this. Whichever it is, it might feel too overwhelming and scary to be able to make sense of everything that you see. There is a reason that the choral score looks a little overwhelming at first. There are a lot of different terms that you will be hearing about, but don't worry, I will explain to you what they mean and where you can find them in your score. First. Let's see what choral score is. Choral score or octavo is sheet music which includes choral parts and optionally an accompaniment. If accompaniment is played by the whole orchestra, it will usually be reduced to only a piano part. Here are a couple of examples of the same piece. Each choral score includes many different elements that are important for understanding the choral score so let's start with the first one. Title of the score always appears on top of the choral score. On the top right side of the score below the title, we can find who the composer of the piece is. If a piece is an old folk song or an arrangement of original composition, we will also see a name of an arranger or editor indicated below the composer's name. On the opposite side from the composer, we will find the name of the lyricist, or the person who wrote the lyrics or text of the piece. When the music piece is created for more than one voice part, we use a vertical line that connects multiple staves into a system. The important thing to remember about the system is that the music within one system should be sung and played simultaneously. Vocal parts are indicated in front of the system, but only at the beginning of the score. It can sometimes be difficult to navigate through the score and finding your vocal part, so it is encouraged that you mark your score with a pencil and that way follow along with more ease. Vocal parts are usually divided into soprano, alto, tenor and bass. In some octavos, more than one part can be notated on one staff, like in this example. In this case, soprano sings the notes which stems point upwards, and alto sings notes which stems point downwards. We can see that the same goes for tenor and bass. If the piece that you are singing is accompanied by piano or other instruments, the accompaniment is notated on the grand staff below the vocal parts and is indicated only at the beginning of the score, just like the vocal parts. In this example, each vocal part is notated on its own staff, so the music can be easier to follow along. Although soprano, alto, tenor, and bass are the most common vocal parts, there are many other options. For example, the score could be written only for alto and soprano, or part one and part two, or tenor and bass. The most important thing is that you always know what part you are singing and you can follow it in your score. Clefs are always indicated at the beginning of every system. In choral music, we use treble clef for soprano, alto and tenor, and bass clef for bass and baritone. Just like clefs, the key signature is indicated at the beginning of every system. Sometimes you might encounter a new key signature within the system. That means that the piece modulated and is now sung in a different key. Time signature is indicated only at the beginning of the piece. It will only be indicated again within the piece if there is a change in meter within the piece. Measure or bar numbers are usually indicated at the beginning of every system. Sometimes there might be a measure number indicated in the middle of the system as well, especially if the piece is longer. That helps us find a certain place in music score faster. 
It is important to remember that within the system, music is sung simultaneously. When we sing, we move from one measure to the next one with other parts in the same time. Tempo or speed of the piece is indicated at the beginning of the score above the time signature. Tempo can either be indicated with a number like here or a word like allegro, vivace, calmly, espressivo and such. Dynamics are marked throughout the score and they refer to the volume of the music. They help us create more interesting dramatic music and so when we see a dynamic marking, we should always follow it. Repeat signs are marked throughout the choral score and are very common in octavos. There are a number of different repeat signs that are important to understand in order for us to be able to follow the score, such as first and second ending, coda, senio, and others. The best tool that can help you read choral score better is a pencil. Writing comments and marking in your score will improve your reading skills and will help you become a better, more confident singer. Now take that choral score that you have been avoiding reading and try to find all these elements in it.